Welcome to uh, Building GUIs with Window Builder, which is a topic that's uh, near and dear to my heart. How many folks here have uh, heard of Window Builder before? And how many folks have actually used it? Good. Well, hopefully I'll, I'll try really hard to teach you something new. But uh, I apologize if I don't. A <laughs> um, little bit about myself. My name is uh, Eric Clayberg. I am currently a software engineering manager for the Dart editor, which is part of the Dart language project at uh, Google. Um, <clears throat> I used to be VP of product development and instantiations up until about two years ago when uh, we were acquired by Google. Um, I've used Java since 96, Eclipse since 2000, and co-author of uh, two Eclipse books, Eclipse plugins, and Eclipse graphical editing framework. Anybody uh, read the Eclipse plugins book in the past at all? Cool. Um, and I've been product manager and architect for a number of different uh, products over the years, Smalltalk based, Java based, <coughs> and so on. And I'm also currently the project lead for the Window Builder project at Eclipse.org, and you can uh, reach me, Clayberg uh, at Google.com. Feel free to contact me if you like. We'll start with a little bit of, uh, I've got a bunch of slides to go through, and I'm going to try to intersperse some uh, live demos, so hopefully I have enough uh, time, so I'll try to do this quickly. A little bit of history on Window Builder. It's had actually a very long history spanning multiple technologies and companies. The very first release of Window Builder was back in 1991, a small talk version by a little uh, two-person company called Cooper & Peters. Um, I got involved with it in 92-93. Uh, the first version for Digitalk Visual Small Talk released by my first company, Object Share, um, which was then acquired by Park Place Digitalk, and then there was a version of uh, Window Builder for Visual Age Small Talk from IBM. Um, we spun out, created instantiations in '97, did another Small Talk release then, and those were all the uh, early Small Talk releases. In uh, 2003, the first Eclipse Java version came out, focused on uh, SWT. We called that SWT Designer. We added uh, Swing Designer or Swing Support a year later. That formed uh, the original Window Builder product. 2006, we were rather fortunate, I have to say, to, to run across uh, Google's uh, GWT and do a version of Window Builder for that called uh, GWT Designer. Um, that was actually the product that uh, caused uh, Google to acquire us in the end. Um, 2009, Window Builder was the Eclipse Community Award winner for Best Commercial Add-on. 2010, acquired by Google and very quickly um, released free and then uh, turned over to the Eclipse Foundation uh, for, as open source. Uh, it has been part of the, the last two release trains, Indigo and Juno, uh, Eclipse 373842. And uh, the interesting thing is uh, it's actually been the same team of people, myself included, has, who's been working on it for nearly 20 years across all these different technologies. So it's uh, quite a long history. Um, you can get the, uh, the Eclipse version at eclipse.org slash window builder. Um, which, what's available there is the window builder engine, which is a, basically a, a generic sort of basis for building any kind of UI builder. And then there's, uh, on top of that, there's code for doing SWT, ERCP, XWT, and Swing development. Uh, window builder provides a very rich API for creating UI designers, very modular with dozens of extension points. Public support for different languages and parsers. So you can parsers. So you can use Java. You can use uh, XML. <coughs> We're certainly looking at it for uh, for uh, Dart in the future. <coughs> um, supports a number of Java-based UI frameworks such as Swing, SWT, RCP, ERCP, ERCP and, and GWT, and XML-based frameworks like XWT, uh, GWT UI Binder, and there's even a, a third-party uh, uh, Android designer built on top of the Window Builder technology. Um, at Eclipse.org, Eclipse we have a number of uh, exemplary tool examples, SWT Designer, Swing Designer, ERSP Designer, XP Designer, and then there are some third-party uh, tools built on top of it, such as the JBuilder, Swing Designer, GWT Designer from Google, and the uh, Android Designer I mentioned earlier, and I'll provide a link to it later. A um, couple uh, quotes from uh, users in the past. I'll make these uh, slides available. Uh, for download later, so don't feel like you need to, uh, to read those. I'm going to try to move through these slides pretty quickly. Uh, Window Builder is composed of the following major components. Um, when you first bring it up, you see the source view. This is basically an embedded version of the Eclipse Java Editor. provides all the services you'd normally find in the Java Editor. 
Switch to design view, and this is where it starts to get uh, interesting. Design view itself is composed of the component tree in the upper left-hand corner, the property pane in the lower left-hand corner, the palette in the center, and by the way, all these different views and subviews can be moved around, rearranged uh, any way you like. Um, various uh, uh, wizards for creating components, um, various uh, toolbars and, uh, uh, and context menus. And as of the most recent release for Eclipse 4.2, we've added an E4 viewpart wizard. So you can do uh, E4 development. The product has uh, a lot of uh, state-of-the-art features. I'm going to go through each of these uh, in detail and demo a number of them. Um, WYSIWYG and bi-directional code generation, uh, which means basically you can work in both the uh, UI designer or in the source code mode and move back and forth freely between them. Powerful and flexible code parser, so the tool can basically read, write almost any kind of uh, code you might throw at it. You know, read, write any, any format or style. Uh, nice support for interna internationalization, uh, visual inheritance, UI factories, morphing, support for hundreds of different widgets and layout managers, as well as uh, graphical menu editing. So this will be the, the first feature I'm going to demo in just a, a minute to get you uh, to show you a little bit about Window Builder, but a couple, couple slides here. Uh, WYSIWYG editing in the design view. So you start out with an empty rectangle and uh, some initial code. As you start adding widgets, the code is instantly generated into the, uh, into the source code. So as you add more widgets, you get uh, more source code. Um, and it works that if you switch over to the uh, source view, if you make any changes, Say, for example, if you want to change a uh, label on a, on a button, it's immediately reflected in the design view. Uh, likewise, if you were to make a, uh, one of the, actually one of the, the cool features is something we call micro-editing. So if you make a change in the UI, the tool will make the smallest possible change to the source code. And that actually has a lot of implications. If you like to uh, you know, refactor your code or reformat your code, the tool doesn't do a top to bottom you know, rewrite every time you make a change. It goes and makes the smallest possible change you can. So if you just changed a label, it'll change just that one text string, leave all your other formatting alone. So let's, uh, let's jump over to a uh, demo. I'll do, uh, get uh, started here. So I'm gonna start by just, uh, first of all, you can create all different kinds of SWT, JFase, RCP, RCP, forms, the XWT components. I'm just going to create a simple SWT app window. Generates a very nice, simple uh, uh, class for this. Switch over to the uh, uh, design view and give myself a little more space here. Um, <coughs> and I'll just start uh, uh, dropping some, in fact, I'm going to zoom this up here. There we go. Start dropping some widgets. Initially, we're in sort of uh, XY absolute mode. Um, you can resize, move widgets around, drop it, drop a text widget. Notice it gives you some, gives you various alignment uh, points if you like. Uh, absolute layout isn't, uh, isn't a very uh, interesting layout, so I could, for example, s switch to a different layout. For example, I could do uh, um, I could use um, SWT form layout. This gives basically a constraint-based layout. So, for example, if I wanted uh, you know, this button locked to the uh, lower right-hand corner uh, or maybe, maybe uh, drag it up back up to the... Uh, upper right hand corner and have this uh, text widget locked to the uh, sides of the, uh, the, the text label and the button. I can do that. You can launch into uh, test, test mode anytime you want to uh, see the effects. It's a real nice uh, support for uh, SDB form layout. My favorite layout though is uh, for doing any kind of uh, actually form based applications is grid layout. Drop uh, grid layout that on there and uh, yeah, meanwhile, I should point this out, it's, it's, it's basically updating the source as we go along. So it instantly switched it all to a grid layout, rewrote it as appropriate. I'll tell this uh, center column here to grab the excess space and, uh, and fill. 
And uh, now you've got a nice, uh, nice simple uh, grid layout. I can uh, add some more widgets to that. Grab this little handle if I want it to span columns. And you see all the nice uh, resize behavior. Meanwhile, the tool is continuing to uh, generate nice, very easy to read uh, source for us. So let's uh, switch back to uh, the slides. All right, so the uh, next thing I'll talk about a little bit more in detail is the powerful and flexible uh, code parser. So the tool can not only uh, edit um, its own code, so code it generates, uh, can also uh, pretty much edit any code you throw at it, whether it's code generated by another GUI builder or code you've written by hand. Um, you can actually point this at quite a bit of the code that's in Eclipse itself, or if you, you know, generate any of the standard uh, RCP templates like the mail, the, the, uh, mail example, it'll happily uh, edit any of those. Um, <clears throat> notice that there are no protected code blocks, which you might have run across in uh, GUI builders in the past. So you can basically add your own code anywhere you want. Um, the tool understands uh, data flow, so you can uh, refactor your codes. So if you want to break the uh, UI method up into multiple pieces, you can uh, do that. Um, it ignores and preserves any non-UI code that's there. So if you want to add, add logic into that UI code for some reason, you can do that and it'll, uh, it'll ignore it. Uh, it's very refactoring friendly and resilient to uh, handmade changes. And uh, there is a one-to-one -one relationship between what's in the Java or XML code and the UI. So there's no uh, intermediate uh, metadata file or anything that might get out of sync. The tool parses the Java code and displays it and then generates back to the same format. Or if, you're, or if it's like XWT, it parses the XML and displays that. So there's no intermediate uh, metadata file that might get uh, out of sync. Um, you can read and write uh, pretty much any kind of format, so there's uh, lots of controls for controlling uh, code formatting. So you can uh, control how, uh, whether widgets are generated as local variables or as fields, whether you want uh, sort of flat style or, or nested block style, uh, pre-initialized fields, uh, lazy declaration if you're doing, uh, doing swing. And um, just to show you the... Uh, Here are the uh, code generation preferences for SWT. So you can see a little example of how the code's going to look, and you can tell it you want you know, fields generated versus local variables. You want flat or indented block style. Um, you want local variables declared final. You want uh, uh, fields uh, prefixed with this. A lot of different uh, options. You can control what method the code is generated. Uh, or you can tell the tool just to try to figure it out. So if you've got existing code, uh, maybe from uh, uh, JBuilder in the past, and you have some JB init methods or, or some other GUI builder, it'll continue to generate into wh whatever um, uh, method it, it discovers. Uh, internationalization. So uh, uh, obviously, if you're going to be building a uh, uh, commercial app, particularly a... Um, a uh, App that has to be used uh, worldwide. You don't want to be uh, hard coding strings. Um, so initially, the, what the tool does is it generates hard coded strings into the code. But we provide some real nice internationalization and localiz localization tools. So if I have a uh, you know simple UI like this, and I'll do a demo of this in a second with the UI I just built, um, you can you can click on this uh, um, the little little uh, world icon there. And it'll pop up this uh, externalized strings dialog, shows you the strings that it found. You can uh, give a little information about where you want those uh, extracted strings to reside. Tell it which strings you want to extract. And then it'll go ahead and uh, generate the, uh, the keys and values for you. Uh, if you want to add uh, additional languages, uh, you can do that. And uh, you have to, of course, do the translations yourself. It didn't do that automatically. Well, that would, well, that would be a cool feature. Um, and then it automatically generates the uh, dot property files, and then you can switch between different languages to see the uh, the effects. So let's uh, let's show that uh, in action here with my little example. So uh, I've got uh, let me give this uh, widget a name here. Do search. 
So let's, uh, let's say, just to show you, it starts out all those widgets have uh, hard-coded strings. And let's go back to the design mode, pull up the internationalization tools. Um, for SWT, we support a variety of different types of uh, code generation. So you can see examples of each of them. I'll take the uh, modern Eclipse message style. Uh, tell it to uh, extract all the strings. And it goes ahead and uh, generates keys and values for me. I'll, I'll tell it to generate a new locale. And uh, let's see. Uh, let's I apologize for my, my translations. I'm sure the German speakers are laughing at me here. Okay. And now um, I can switch back and switch back and forth between languages very easily. And you can see the, uh, uh, you know, automatically adjust the layout as appropriate. Um, if I pull up the um, generated uh, uh, message properties file in English, as well as one for German, I'll put these side by side. In the layout. And the cool thing is, if I go into the English mode, and I apologize for this ridiculously tiny screen on a real monitor, this is quite pleasant. Um, let's change the, uh, the text of the, uh, oops. change the text of this uh, search button to find. And uh, notice that uh, it updated the appropriate uh, properties file. If I switch over to German mode, oops. it uh, updated the uh, German property file. So uh, even though it's uh, extracted the strings, um, it keeps, uh, uh, when you, as you continue to edit, it updates the property files rather than, rather than the, uh, the text. And notice that the, uh, in the source, all those hard-coded strings were replaced by references to the appropriate uh, messages. Next, we have support for uh, visual inheritance. Uh, this allows you to create uh, really interesting uh, UIs and then inherit them uh, in subclasses and then uh, uh, reuse uh, uh, elements uh, later on. Um, so you can easily expose uh, fields of widgets or, uh, or properties. Um, you can, uh, and it'll generate uh, accessors for you. You can uh, expose entire uh, widgets. Um, and then easily add components and event handlers to inherited fields, uh, change public properties of inherited components, and uh, I'm going to do a, a quick example of, uh, of this. So let's uh, start by creating a uh, empty composite. I'm going to give it a grid layout. Give it a label, give it a text. Nothing uh, too exciting here. Uh, I'll take this, I'll take this uh, text label and expose that as a property. So it generates a, uh, an accessor for it. Save this. Now I'm going to generate a subclass. Notice that those uh, widgets from the parent automatically show up, but I can't actually select them. They're, they're fully encapsulated. But I can actually, um, since I exposed that property of this uh, name label, I can scroll down and find uh, this new name label property and change it to, I'll change this contact name. And you can see that it uh, basically used that new API to update that value from the parent. I can add a few more widgets. Let's add another label. 
phone, another text. And now you can see basically we've uh, basically subclassed the original UI, changed uh, one of the labels, and added a few more widgets. While I'm at it, I'm going to expose this one widget externally. So I'll say expose component. And that actually generates a, an accessor um, for the widget itself. Now, I'm going to uh, get, rid of all these get rid of all these widgets here. And add my, let's see, add that second composite. All right. Now, the interesting thing is, um, in this consumer application, I can do the same thing I did before. I could uh, uh, change its label, uh, call it maybe username here. Um, this phone widget, since I actually exposed that widget, it shows up as the only one, only one of the widgets I can actually do something with. So I can do anything with this, including change its font or change its label. I'll change its label to uh, something else. And we can even go so far as to add a... Uh, uh, another set of uh, widgets to this. Let me, and you can see the source code. We start out by pulling in that uh, new composite. We've, whoops, um, we've accessed the, uh, the phone label to set its text directly. We've used that uh, API we exposed earlier to set the other label. And then we've added a couple of additional, uh, additional widgets. So real nice support for doing any kind of visual inheritance, uh, creating custom widgets, uh, things like that. Um, next, uh, another feature we have, creating uh, UI factories. Uh, this allows you to create uh, another way to create usable, reusable components. So if you have a uh, particular kind of component, maybe a uh, you know big red label, you want to you want to create those all over the place. You can basically select any kind of widget, and there's a basically some wizards for creating uh, factories. So I'm going to show you uh, basically do a demo on that real quick. Um, let's say I have a, uh, a widget here, and I've uh, set the font to large and bold, and we set the color to red, and I want to have a lot of components like this. Well, I could, uh, you can see the source code generated for it, you know, pretty simple, setting all those uh, properties. Um, I can uh, right click on this, say, create a factory. Call it my factory. Um, I'm going to add it to my custom palette. I'm going to call the uh, method create create uh, big red label, and you can see the uh, the code for the uh, big red label method I'm going to create. Now, there are a couple of things in here I want to exclude. I don't, I don't want the bounds hard coded, so I can tell it to uh, um, take that out. And I also want to pass the uh, string into it. So find the, uh, the text. And then it adds, this, adds the uh, string to the argument list. I'll go ahead and, uh, and uh, create that. And it actually, in the process, it actually refactors my code to use that new factory. And if I go and um, uh, it also added it to the palette. So I can create another one. Oh, notice it's also uh, automatically, uh, since I'd already internationalized this app, it's going ahead and auto-internationalizing it as I add new strings. It's another little feature. Um, a real, real nice way to create uh, fat, reusable factory components. And we are almost to the end. Um, 
the support for uh, morphing. So if you have widgets you need to replace that you've already set up, added event handlers and so on, you can easily uh, do that, morph any kind of widget into another kind of widget. Uh, support for all different types of uh, uh, widgets and, uh, and layout managers. So each, each layout manager, you might have noticed that uh, you know, Absolute Layout had one kind of feedback, Form Layout had another kind of feedback, Grid Layout had a third kind of feedback. Each layout manager has its own custom UI feedback that's specific to that particular layout manager makes it uh, easy to use. And finally, there's support for uh, graphical menu editing. So you can add menu bars and uh, uh, graphically add any kind of uh, you know, submenus, cascades, and so on. And I'll do a quick little, uh, quick little demo of that. So I can drop down to my, pull up my menu widgets, drop a menu bar, uh, drop a cascade item, call this file, uh, add some uh, menu items to it. I could do uh, separators, add other cascades, and with their own sub items. And then, again, anytime I want to test this, I can play with it. And you can see the code for the uh, generated uh, menu items. Uh, some screenshots of some of the uh, versions of Window Builder, SCP Designer, which I've been playing with here, XWT, XWT Designer, uh, ERCP Designer, which actually has uh, can do some uh, phone layout, uh, Swing Designer, very similar to uh, SP Designer, except you know, you've got Swing Widgets, Swing Layout Managers, things like that, uh, GWT Designer, uh, the Android Designer I mentioned earlier, and there's a link to where you can get it. And it shows a phone preview as well. They can do things like switch between horizontal, vertical, um, switch uh, themes, and, and so on. So um, anybody have any questions? And while I, I answer questions, uh, here's some information on where you can get it, documentation, where the issue tracker is, forum, and so on. I've got three minutes. So if I heard that correctly, roadmap for the next version. Um, the, the tool does have uh, some support for like doing, uh, I didn't even show up, but there's a real nice support for data binding and we do support like EMF data binding. Um, there's certainly a lot more that could be done there. Uh, our, our main goal right now, since the tool is, is very mature, I mean it has fairly complete support for SWT and Swing uh, is to basically keep the tool working with newer versions of Eclipse so people, people can basically use it to build applications. So we added uh, you know, the E4 part wizard so people could use it to build uh, you know, E4 applications. Um, you know, we're, we're looking for other committers to help. I know there's some folks that have talked about maybe doing a Java FX you know, tooling on top of this. It would be a great platform for doing that, but it's not something that the existing committers have time for, um, and there's there's always lots of you know bug fixing and stuff we're we're doing. So not not a lot of big plans other than just keeping the tool working long term. Um, but we'd be happy to uh, have other committers and uh, people who want to actually use this as a basis for projects. Uh, we're very happy to work with them, help them do that. There, are, I know a, a couple of projects that are going on right now using this as a basis. Okay, anybody else? You could, sure, sure. You could. The, the, well, the, the, the code generator is completely pluggable. So right now, there are you can generate Java, it can generate XML. So we're looking at having it do Dart, possibly. So um, you could really 
have it generate any language, any kind of metadata you want, but you know you have to do the, the work to do that. Um, and certainly if it's generating Java code, it might be able to read that directly. So. All right, I think we are uh, out of time. Thank you very much. And if anybody has any questions for me, I'll stand out in the, in the hall. <laughs> <laughs>